I wonder if uh, there are any Wiccans in the house. Got any Wiccans? Kind of, sort of. I know, many, there are many kind of, sort of Wiccans. Um, and in fact, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sort of do a little bonus. Besides Wicca, I think I may talk a little bit about um, contemporary goddess worship because there's a mashup between the two entities of belief and or celebration, depending on how you think about it. I'm also making uh, my relationship with the space-time continuum a little stronger by turning on my iPhone and seeing actually how much time has eloped, elapsed. Um, I am really grateful to Hank for bringing me back to this um, day, this conference, and I'm really sad that I can't spend the whole rest of the afternoon with you. I brought a couple of my mailing lists that are back on the table, uh, the middle table back there. There's a pink one and a blue one in case anyone is interested in either uh, the Center for Sex and Culture, the entity that I founded with my partner Robert, um, or Good Vibrations, where I have my day job. I'm honored to uh, talk about sex for a living most of the time, and it's a rare treat to be able to talk about spirituality that isn't directly in the context of sort of sexualized spirituality as with Tantra or what have you, or American Tantra, I mean. So um, I may mention sex a couple of times in this talk. I don't think I'll get in trouble for doing that, but that's not going to be the, the complete f focus of what I speak about um, as opposed to most of the times that I get up and speak to an audience. So I, uh, did, I discovered Wicca when I was a young, uh, young woman. I was about 11 um, when I saw an ad in the back of a magazine that would have made it 1978, if you're doing the math. 68, sorry, 1968. Um, and the, the book was called Potions and Spells of Witchcraft. And I was probably not a typical 11-year-old, and yet I was typical in one sense, I think, that I did not feel as though my uh, human power in the world was respected as much as I thought it ought to be. I was a little girl. So I decided to order potions and spells of witchcraft to see if I could even out the, the, the scales. Um, I actually think that the act of ordering potions and spells of witchcraft and asking my mother to write the check for it was the magic that was supposed to happen because I don't know that I actually got anything out of the book that, that made a huge change in my life, with the exception of making the loop, closing the loop of finding something spiritually interesting. And I wouldn't have called it spiritual when I was 11, but shortly thereafter, I began to think of it in terms of spirituality. I was a little atheist kid. I had gone to uh, church for a couple of years with my um, non, not very believing, but um, dad is a teacher in a tiny town, so we must keep up appearances family. And uh, I knew that that whole business wasn't my thing. Uh, as a matter of fact, they let me go out in the car, lock myself in the car every Sunday afternoon for the last two-thirds of the time that my family sojourned in this church uh, with a stack of fairy tale books and read fairy tales instead of going to Sunday school. And uh, that was because I was asking inconvenient questions. And they all pretty much agreed that I should just go sit in the back of the car with Andrew Lang's fairy tale books and uh, learn something about the universe that way, not that way. So I was well set up um, for having a sort of a, um, a fairy tale inflected, otherworldly kind of spirituality. I also grew up in the country and in the mountains, in fact, where I talked to trees and had a, a pretty robust relationship with the natural world around me. So when I got to uh, college and I found out that there was another way of looking at witchcraft than the notion of potions and spells, that in fact there was a, a contemporary community who embraced this as their spiritual path or their religion, depending on who you ask, and that it was called Wicca, um, an old word whose root, we think, means to bend or to shape, which matches the spells and the potions, but also, um, I think, speaks to the notion that we, in Wicca, bend and shape our understanding of spiritual notions um, in a different direction than the mainstream. Uh, that 
some witches were feminist heroes having been burned at the stake for crimes against femaleness and humanity and whatever it was that got them there in the first place. Um, that Wicca was a, an ancient uh, spiritual system that went back, depending on how you trace, to um, the Northern European and English worlds. Um, most of the people you ask within this community will tell you that it goes way, way, way back. And some of the people you ask within this community and people who study it will say, well, it was kind of a little bit invented out of whole cloth during the Victorian era as an alternative new religious movement. Um, I did uh, get my Phi Beta Kappa because I did a research study in college about this, but I don't pretend to know the answer to that. I will tell you that Wicca is a contemporary spiritual system with great meaning to a lot of people, and I want to try to describe wh what that looks like and why that is as kind of a counterpoint to some of the other discussions that we're having today in this conference. I am going to tell you that I'm going to say next to nothing about transhumanism, uh, that if anything, I am a fellow traveler and a, 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 a friend of the family. I'm not, uh, I'm not in it, I'm not an expert on it, and I'm not an expert on what Wicca thinks about it, so perhaps you're going to need to ask another witch. But I will say that um, that's the, the, the notions about the, the, the spiritual reality within which we are contained that Wicca presents may have some, may have some points of contact. I also just want to say in so many words, because the camera's on me, I'm just going to say it, that witchcraft is not Satanism. Now, all y'all come from around here mostly. You're, you're not out there saying witchcraft equals Satanism. I don't think you look like the Harry Potter banning, uh, library, torch wielding, etc. I don't think that's who you are, but I'm just going to say in so many words, particularly because Satanism has been in the news this week, and I don't know if you have a Satanist. So I'm just going to say that the uh, statue that's going to go on the Oklahoma State House grounds, paid for by the Satanists and their Kickstarter campaign, is ready to be made. So if any of you contributed, woot, and it has a nice sexy sculpture of Satan, and two happy little Oklahoma children looking up at him going, look, it's Satan. And just in case they don't raise enough money to actually install it on the Oklahoma State House uh, lawn, I wonder if we'll bring it here to Golden Gate Park. There have been some Satanists who have been active in San Francisco for quite a long while. This would be a sensible place to put it. But witchcraft and Wicca are not Satanism. Satanism, in my opinion, this may sound I fight in words to some of you. I don't really mean it that way. Just an analytical thought experiment. Satanism is a denomination of Christianity. It reveres a notion, a, a being, a notional being that is contextualized within and deeply important to Christianity. And Wicca does not have that guy. Wicca has a guy that looks like that guy, depending on how you look at him, but he's not that guy. Although they might be descended from the same guy. But witchcraft is not Satanism. I just felt that I need to clear that up. So today's witchcraft is kind of two things. A Wicca is two things. Because not all Wiccans will say witchcraft is even exactly what they do. Potions and spells, uh, contrary to my experience in 1968, are not necessarily what it's all about. Celebrating, celebrating the seasons in the natural world is certainly what it's about. And there is an adjunct, like let's think of a Venn diagram where this part of Wicca is extremely, extremely focused on the natural world and our relationship with it and within it, as, as it. And this part, which Venn diagrams over, which thinks about a cosmology in which there is a supreme goddess and a god, her son, and sometimes consort. The sex does come in there, although you have to focus on it if you really want to, because son is sometimes, I'll explain. Um, and in the middle there is this notion that the supreme being, if any, of Wicca is a goddess. And this side of the Venn diagram says that supreme being is Gaia, the earth. Have I lost anybody yet? Okay, good. 
So feminism, second wave feminism, gave a boost to Wicca because of this goddess-worshipping piece, I think. This is actually my, sort of my analytical, sociological words that I'm, I'm bringing to you. Because notionally having a female deity, not a male deity, confronts challenges and helps to bend the backstory of the culture that many of us grew up with, right? Not everybody grew up Christian or Jewish, Judeo-Christian or Muslim within which often in all of those religions and in others too, the supreme being is generally called by a male pronoun. Not all of us grew up in those contexts, but many of us did, and all of us living in the United States have been touched by the ideas that are held dear by at least some part of that system of religions. And if you think about the supreme being as being female, not male, it's a bend or twist. Or maybe it's a revolution. It's hard to say exactly what it is, but what it is for some people at least, and many people who, who embrace Wicca and feel at home there, it is a space within which we can lay down the problematic stories about gender and sexual expectations that are told almost by definition by religious systems that have a, an all-powerful father god. Did I lose anybody yet? So, having said that, where am I on the time-space continuum? Let me check. Um, having said that, I also want to say that there is a, there's a way in which feminist goddess spirituality and Wicca touch but are not one another. One can be a pretty um, impassioned and fervent and uh, worshipful, I guess, Wiccan, Celebratory is more what we would say, I think. Without being very focused on this notion of the goddess and the god. You could, you, it, it's, it's present within Wiccan cosmology, but for some people, the notion that the earth is animate, that everything on the earth is animate, that we are among those animated spirits all together, and that the earth is predominantly the ob object, if, if that's the right word, of worship, is the most important piece to Wiccans. So Western nature worship would be one way of thinking about that. And there are um, high holy days that have to do with the solstices and equinoxes, the cross corners, which is halfway between each solstice and equinox. I think if I had a PowerPoint, I could clearly show you that, but I'm a Luddite, so there you have it. And so we just actually had one of those holidays. May Day is a really important holiday in the Wiccan cosmology. Um, and if any of you are not Wiccans, but also are very fond of May Day because of the rhyme, hey, hey, it's the first of May, outdoor fucking starts today, then you will know something, maybe not spiritually, but you will know something of the joy with which a Wiccan might approach uh, the advent of May Day. So coming up, summer solstice, super important. Um, very big high holy day for Wiccans, the solstice um, in the winter and the equinoxes in spring and fall. Big deals, big festivals, big parties, yule logs, lots of things. So that's the nature piece and it intersects with the goddess piece in a way that I'm about to describe. But let me first say that within feminist spiritual theory, which may or may not, inc which includes Wicca, but is not only Wicca. Feminists have gone back, and some other uh, historians and sociologists of religion also have gone back, to find um, female deities, or may female male pair deities, or once in a while, a so-called female deity who changes sex once in a while, um, in other cultures at other times and sort of brought them forward as a way to ground a spiritual system that doesn't 
need to rely on what maybe they would call male privilege or, or a kind of male dominance to balance all that out. Whether people who come from communities and cultures without a male father God feel as much need or zeal about awakening um, long sleepy goddesses is an interesting question that I do not know the answer to. But I will tell you that for many people, having found that much goddess religion back in our search of the old time religion is a healing and a significant thing. And I don't think it's only feminists who feel that way, but I certainly know that feminism embraced this scholarship. Uh, hook, line, and sinker loves having found a bunch of awesome goddesses. And awesome goddesses that, that represent a lot of different human qualities or post-human qualities, um, or extra human qualities. And um, that, was, that was really what rooted me in Wicca, that and the celebrating, because there's two more things I want to tell you about. So Wicca is a more sex positive religion than many. In many religious systems, sex, sexual diversity, um, sexual zeal, too much of it, extramarital, homosexual, what have you, not really so okay. I don't know if any of you came from those places, but if you did, I think you know what I'm talking about. And if you didn't come from those places, I bet you can think of at least one news story in the last three months that really expressed that in a, in a lively way. Here in the United States, here in the 21st century, we still live, if not in that world, touched, uh, touching that world at all times. So when I hear one of the creation myths of Wicca, which I will tell you now, uh, that the goddess was alone in the vastness of space, and looking out over the vastness of space, the vastness of empty space, she saw her reflection in the black curve which mirrored her. She became so excited that she began to masturbate and she, began, she gave birth to the entire cosmos. I don't remember that from Sunday school. Um, I don't think that's the way most Wiccans necessarily um, come upon and, and venerate the creation myth, because there's not only one in this religion. This is pretty DIY. There's certain notional ideas that, that hold it, but there's a lot of, well, like Unitarianism that way. And in fact, there's a Den Venn diagram between Unitarian ladies and witches. Oh, is there ever? I don't know. Maybe the person in the audience who went, uh, maybe I'm a Wiccan. Maybe she's half Unitarian. I don't know. <laughs> so in the context of sexuality is when we get back to the cycle of the seasons and the goddess who gives birth to the god uh, in the deep depths of winter. I wonder if this sounds familiar to anybody at all. Um, the god is born around winter solstice, fledges, grows and is old enough and sexually fledged enough to become the consort by midsummer and dies again at the time of the harvest and then is reborn again. So some people will say that certain elements of that backstory have been borrowed by others and embellished upon in different ways, often without the consort part. And I want to be really clear when I say about the consort part, taken as a lover. So you've got two sexes, at least, represented as godheads, as figureheads, as, as the spiritual apotheosis of what we see and experience here on Earth. And of course, I'm going to tell you right here that there are not only two sexes or genders. I don't believe that for one minute, not for a minute, at least five, and probably more than that. That's what I'm going to tell you. But Old school Wicca sees the goddess as the supreme um, spiritual person, being, whatever, whatever she is, um, a projection, and the god as secondary but equally important in many ways. And um, the ways 
that the relationship shifts over the course of the year. Clearly, I think, in the way that I explained it, I hope it was clear that it mirrors the changes of the seasons, the changes of um, the weather, the harvest. It, it follows the wheel of the year. The wheel of the year is the basic um, set of celebratory calendar times within Wicca. So just one more thing before I um, shut up and see if uh, there are a couple of questions, because I know I'm running out of time. Um, because we live in a time technologically in which we perhaps are on the brink of helping to cause changes on the earth her mother, our mother, that um, may affect our ability to live comfortably here, the lives of her other creatures and our siblings on this earth, whom we are not above, whom we were not brought here to control. Because we might be at a time of great and dire danger for the earth, our mother, there are people within Wicca who think that Wicca has revived and re-arisen and is bringing people uh, into its fold specifically to do work to, to help to save the earth. I'm wearing my activism is the rent I pay for living on this earth shirt. And uh, I don't know that it's easy to separate out contemporary Wicca from ecological activism um, it probably less easy to separate it out from ecological activism than from feminism, but both of those social movements have made a pretty vibrant home for Wiccans, um, who at one time were pretty under the radar, pretty closeted, and not so much anymore. If you're interested in Wicca, there are many places to find out more about it. Uh, the Bay Area, not surprisingly, is a bit of a hotbed, and um, there are covens who celebrate together. Celebrate is what we mean by worship. That's the way, that's the word that we use, by the way, for worship. Um, had a little ba different balance to it. And there may even be covens who, I first read about this when I was quite young and I thought it was awesome. There are, there's a sim uh, ceremony that a few Wiccans have done, but not everybody does, called Drawing Down the Moon, in which in a coven or a celebration situation, one woman in the coven takes the role of the goddess, one man takes the role of the god, and they have sex right in front of everybody. And I don't remember that from Sunday school either, which is one of the reasons that while I usually talk about sex in public, I was super honored and super happy to have a chance, uh, thanks to Hank's kind invitation, to talk to you now. I know we don't have too much time for questions, but if anybody's got any. Thank you. We do have time for two or three questions. I see one here and one there. I'm acquainted with a few Wiccans that do have what seems to me to be transhumanist inclinations. One of them is Pepper Lewis, and I'm wondering if you're familiar with Pepper Lewis and what your thoughts are on her. I am actually not familiar with her, so I'm sorry. Do you want to say, do you want to say a little something about the I'm transhumanist a, link as you understand it? It might be really interesting. I, I see it there. I'm not an expert on Wicca, but it, it's fascinating, and I've, I've listened to Pepper Lewis. I recommend her to, her, to you. Thank you very I much. I think you would like Pepper Lewis. Thank you very much. I will say that the notion... Uh, uh, that Wicca animates everything with spirit does give space for spirit to continue in a changed way once our bodies are no longer um, as animated in the way that they are today. I think, that there are, I think that there's plenty of space within even the Wicca I know without having discussed transhumanism with anyone in it. I could absolutely see a large barn door to drive that particular truck through. Just a quick one. I really appreciated your comment about uh, we are not superior to Mother Earth's other creatures. Uh, in fact, maybe we're the problem, not the, maybe you were a, a parasite on Mother Earth. So the question would be, um, how, how do we go forward balancing our own selves with the other creatures on Mother Earth? Or well, I think what I would say to that is that we've got two somewhat warring notions. Um, I don't 
generally like the language of combat all that much, but the idea that we're here to, to dominate and, and utilize the world, it's sort of the, the, the religious and the political manifest destiny that we all learned about, you know, that, that manifest destiny didn't come out of no, um, no philosophy, it came out of a certain kind of religious philosophy. And the, the fact that this is a complex in our culture now needs to have alternate voices call out the assumptions. One of the things about these big cultural ideas that they sometimes they sink down so deeply that you don't know that your thoughts, feelings, and actions are impacted by ideas that people decided were holy hundreds of years ago, or ideas that come from gendered notions that our generations did not invent not one bit. So, so talking the talk and, and stepping up and, and having the climate change argument and all of that and, and talking about um, the way that we are, if anything, we're co-created to hold this planet, that it's all well and good for people to die and the ones who have been saved go somewhere else but that leaves a lot of collateral, collateral damage, I might put it, and that I think there is plenty of room in much um, Judeo-Christian thought and, and, and in a, within other religious systems too, to open some doors to some respect for these ideas. I mean, at the moment when um, we have this brilliant spaceship, if that's all she is, I, many of us would not agree that that's all Earth is, but we have it, we're not all ready to leave it by any means, so we might as well be doing the work to preserve her. That's how I would at least start that conversation. And then there's like political action and all kinds of stuff that has to flow and evolve from that. Take our last question. One more, that's all we have time for. Hi, I just, I've been having a lot of uh, uh, cognitive dissonance trying to, um, uh, trying to make coherent your initial statement about being a fellow traveler with transhumanism, <laughs> given that, uh, especially neo-paganism, that, uh, you know, the last 60 years or so, has uh, universally been linked to um, a response against scientism and technology and industrialism and they're all very much uh, part and parcel of all of the means by which transhumanists hope to overcome things that you also see as a good end mm. so I, I, I did you know in, in saying well you know saving the earth is good and you want to save it and I want to save it but the, the means are so d distant that I, I can't make a connection. Sure. Uh, I appreciate that a lot. I, I didn't want to speak for the rest of neo-paganism around this question because I don't think I'm, nobody elected me. <laughs> There's not as much hierarchy within this world as there is in some, but I'm, I'm not that person. Um, and as a fellow traveler myself, one of the ways that I wanna say that, that this, this set of spiritual ideas that I've shared with you are not the only way that I look at the world and, and are not the end of the road, the end of the analysis. I think that there's a way in which um, our magician forebears were the scientists of, our t of their time, right? Um, what, was, what was alchemy but a, a mix of science and magic? And we won't know for a long time how much of the science that we hold dear today was magical thinking. Not until, not until it all spins out to the end of the, the reel, right? It, the, the, the spool is not yet spun out. And so I don't want to suggest that all neo-pagans or certainly all Wiccans are anti-science. I think there are plenty of neo-pagans within the ranks of scientists, but who want to make connections about the world and our place in it spiritually as much as they want to understand those connections. That's, I, maybe that's the, the best I can do right now to help with the
cognitive dissonance. I hope that's a little bit helpful. I also want to say that there's a book that I, um, uh, an interview with me appears in, and I think it's the reason that Hank thought of me in the first place, called Modern Pagans, and that some of you may find that an interesting book. There's a bunch of, of different ways that modern paganism has evolved, and this book, um, at, at its particular historical moment, 10 or 12 years ago, tried to get its arms around this, and it's an interesting read. It's, it's got pictures. So I hope that uh, some of you will find that interesting. I'm going to head out of here pretty shortly. Um, I'm going to ask Hank if he wouldn't mind um, getting the mailing list to me later. Um, Hank, is that okay? Yes. So that um, if you want to sign up on it later, you don't have to run up and do it right now after I leave the room. Thanks. <laughs>